Hey, chat, come on. I suspect the majority of this is going to be about how... Uh, the majority of this is going to be about how fucking, uh, you know, how, how he owned the BBC. And everyone thought that his hair looked great in it. In the interest of saving absolutely everybody's time, I feel like doing a generalized statement to all legacy media inside of the Matrix. And I'm doing it to save their time and mine, as well as protect the minds of the masculine youth for the future. Yeah, masculine youth out here fucking just wearing the skinniest schmedium they can fucking find to show off their titties like a slut. I want to make it very clear that the legacy media, which I enjoyed the company of today, have made a massive mistake and missed a chance to do some genuinely interesting journalism. After being unfairly incarcerated in a Andrew Tate, the fucking beacon of, of uh, you know, journalistic integrity. He's like, let me tell you how you're supposed to do journalism. It's like, what, what the fuck do you know? Didn't start a journalism operation. You know what I mean? Romanian dungeon. I thought that even the BBC, in its absolute arrogance and hubris, would be smart enough to come to me after six months being the first interview I gave to The Matrix. And be smart enough. Don't you think you're dumb enough that you thought that, like, they would be kind to you? How was nobody asking that question? Why are Andrew Tate's dig riders so fucking stupid? Like, how is no one going, hey, man, why did you do this interview, you fucking idiot? Like, of course they were going to shit on you. To ask. Like, even though, even if you actually did a good job. Okay, even if you actually did a good job, they would have cut it to make it look awful, which you didn't do a good job. You did an awful job. And then they actually kind of saved your ass a little bit by cutting it short. And then you released the full tape, which made you look even worse. Questions people were genuinely interested in. What's it like inside of a Romanian prison cell? How were you treated? Why was a person's liberty deprived of them for six months without charge? How is your mental state post your unfair incarceration? <laughs> Why would they say that, brother? Why would they fucking say any of those things, dude? You're so stupid. I mean, I guess this is just like the signal to his audience. That like, that's what they should have asked if they were doing their job. I guess he thinks the BBC audience is supposed to treat him like fresh and fit. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, why don't you just do an interview with them instead, dumbass? Why did you have to do it? Why did you try and do it with BBC? Oh, because they get no fucking play for the most part. Is he completely free now? Fuck no. He can't leave his apartment still. Or his house, sorry. Um, that's it. He, he's still under house arrest. Things people are genuinely interested in hearing. But instead, they came with the same old talking points. And I'd like to address all of these talking points to the Matrix media now to prevent this happening again because it's a monumental waste of everybody's time. I say things on the internet. I've been making content on the internet for a very long time. Finding a clip from 2016, eight years ago, finding a four hour long podcast from 2016 Ignoring all context. Yeah, no, totally. Uh, everybody knows Andrew Tate famously never said women are property. Uh, like recently. Totally, man. So like, so like what happens then? Like, do, does his fa do his fan base go, wait, I feel betrayed. I thought you hated women. What's up with that? <laughs> like... <laughs> Like, that's the whole reason why you have a fan base. Are they going to look to this and go, wait a minute, you didn't say that about women? I'm so confused. So, like... Ignoring everything positive I say about men and women in the world and taking a single sentence and trying to pretend that's my entire worldview is not the bombshell you think it is. Nobody cares. Everybody understands what satire is. Everybody understands what a joke is. Everybody understands it's the internet. 
Everybody understands all of these things. Plus, the people who know the truth of my message are very capable of understanding what is satirical and what is true. People are not as stupid as you'd like them to be. Sitting down with me and missing the chance to have a genuinely interesting interview with genuinely interesting questions that people are interested in hearing the answers to, and instead attempting this attack to get this bombshell aha moment is never going to work. Bro, this is, uh, dude, 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 dude. What you think is interesting for your fan base and what the BBC thinks is interesting for like the average normie population that isn't invested in like 11 different crypto rug pulls that they lost like thousands of dollars to are two separate things, okay? I don't even like the fucking BBC, but of course they were going to cover like the shit that's actually important for the BBC. Why the fuck would they dick ride you? Is he that delusional where he genuinely thinks? Is he that delusional that he genuinely thinks that like the BBC is supposed to do a puff piece like they are the fresh and fit brothers? You know what I mean? Is that what he thinks? It's like a PUA podcast and uh, they're supposed to give him like a, they're supposed to give him like a, like a positive interview. You're not Elon Musk. You know what I mean? You are in a very different playing field. Okay. Elon Musk can get away with being a fucking major asshat, okay, and, and be conservative and say all this awful shit and do all this awful shit and be an, like a an clear loser uh, failing to, to uh, do, I mean, completely destroying Twitter, and yet the BBC will give him a positive interview because he's one of the richest people on the planet. You, on the other hand, are a broke boy. You're fucking broke. So, of course, the BBC is not going to give you a fucking, you know, dick ridey interview. Bro, he just said that a conversation with him could be interesting. Yeah. Exactly. Not really. Because one, I'm too smart for all of you. And two, nobody cares. Nobody cares I made a joke eight years ago because everybody knows I was joking. And everybody knows the truth of my message. So you're wasting absolutely everybody's time. Bro, the fucking, the, the hair thing. I can't get over it, dude. Like, I care about that. I'm sure people care about that. There's got to be at least people in his fucking fandom. Some of his stands got to be like, dude, what is happening with that hair? Why are you doing that? Worse than wasting everybody's time. What you're genuinely doing is damaging the minds of young men. And I think I have a responsibility as one of the most influential men on the planet to protect the minds of young men and all of the men who look up to me. Nobody, no young man below the age of 30 has any interest in what the BBC or the legacy media say. They don't care and they don't watch it unless I appear on there. So when I sit across from a reporter who says that having a nice car makes you a misogynist, it's disingenuous and also, I just, I guess I got to do this again because this is a man who like operates with this. But, um, okay, let's look up Andrew Tate, right? Over the course of like the past five years, okay? So he really popped off when he got arrested because everybody fucking hates him. Now let's compare that to the BBC, the broadcasting company. Yeah, seems like, uh, you know, they are a little bit more relevant than you, which would, of course, understandably is the reason why you wanted to go and get an interview with them and not with like, I don't know, Fresh and Fit, which doesn't even show up as a fucking relatable ser a related search term. Because it hasn't even been picked up by the fucking algo. You know what I mean? Also, success. Correct. there's another reason people might look up BBC 2 lol. Yeah, except that reason is eliminated when you click on the drop down menu where it says the broadcasting company. Okay, that's why I clicked on Andrew Tate, internet personality. 
I don't know if you know how, uh, you know, Google Trends work, but that's what you're supposed to do. Uh, I mean, the BBC interview was complete dog shit. Everyone who watched this knows she did horribly. Or maybe you watched it alongside XQC and cultivated that perspective, okay? I don't know. I'm speculating. I don't know if you did. I know you're a fucking major juicer. She did not do dog shit. There were parts of the interview where she hyper-focused on, like, silly nonsense and came across like she was in the wrong. But she ultimately, absolutely fucking lutely did a great job, Okay. If you went into that interview and you looked at that and your takeaway from that was, wow, Andrew Tate really handled himself wonderful here, then I don't know what to tell you. Then I did a poor job when I debated Andrew Tate and he fucking owned me too because she did pretty much what I did. There was a major difference there, however, and that major difference was that, uh, you know, she was a woman. Andrew Tate's counter to, like, all of her main points was, nah, I didn't say that. She did bring receipts. She did bring receipts. And if she had brought video evidence, he still would have said, nah, I didn't say that. You are delusional if you think that Andrew Tate's, nah, I didn't write those things on my website was an effective counter. You're out of your fucking mind. She asked him what she was supposed to. She said, here's the proof of what you have said. And he literally just lied the entire time. And he said the, the women or property thing was from eight years ago, which is not even true. He's currently saying it was all jokes. That's crazy. I'm telling you, man. I, I don't know if XUC watched his interview, but I suspect he probably watched it and said, oh, she did a horrible job. And that's why a bunch of Zoomers uh, and a bunch of juices in here are literally going, oh, yeah, no, she actually did a fucking piss poor job. Check yourself. Reconsider the actual conversation that you watched without guidance from your favorite streamer. And then, uh, you know, maybe, maybe assess the situation a little bit better because... She literally said to him, dead ass, I'm not paraphrasing, this is from your website. I'm reading your quote. And he said, I didn't write that. Brilliant counter, sir. Very effective. That's insane. What are you supposed to do in that situation? With Bugatti and a cigar, but it comes with a side order of misogyny. How does having a Bugatti and a cigar come with misogyny? Because it's all mixed together in what you teach. I find that to be like that's a that's a hyper specific clip where she was trying to draw a larger point. The reason why that's not the entire conversation is because he wants to make himself look good, which is why he clipped that small part. In the larger conversation, she's trying to say, you present yourself as this beacon that people should aspire towards. Like, young men should be like you. How does that pair with the misogynistic sentiment that you disseminate on a daily basis? That's what she's saying. Okay? I've said similar things to Andrew Tate as well. extremely dangerous he was getting owned so fucking hard in the longer video that we watched that his female lawyer had to step in like eight times and he had to turn to her and be like no 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 i'm dealing with this well i'm dealing with this well okay i'm not a subscriber so you probably won't pay attention to me but this is the point you can't prove that he's the one who wrote that Wrote all of that on his website? Okay, dude. That's ridiculous. Yeah, first of all, you are a subscriber, so suck my dick. And you, much like everyone else, will no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. Guess what? I just fucking flipped it. Okay? 
Fuck you. Because at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. You can't fucking get me like that. You can't get me like that. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. I did see his debate. And I was cooking up a better one, and he fucked me, okay? Because at the top of the hour, there's still a three-minute ad break. And if you don't want to get fucked by the top of the hour ad break, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month. Use it on your favorite broadcaster. Hopefully, that's me. You can also get gifted a sub. Here's a three-minute ad break now. Maddie Codes, thank you for the 10 tier one gifted subs, allowing 10 people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. Rhetoric. I find that to be extremist rhetoric. And I think it's very dangerous for young men rhetoric. to think that if they work hard for something in their lives, if they dedicate themselves and they're diligent and hardworking and they try hard, that they'll be a bad person. I hate the idea of a world where a man who dedicates himself to excellence so he can enjoy the finer things in life is criticized and ostracized. Yeah, man, that's why everyone's mad at you. Because you fucking are talking about how you should dedicate yourself to enjoying the finer things in life. Ay, ay, ay. I'm going to be honest with you. If you still believe any of the shit that Andrew Tate is saying at this point, it is impossible. You, you will not be saved, okay? He's doing shadow boxing in the shower now? Yeah. Like, the Romanian court, the Romanian courts are not currently investigating you for enjoying the finer things in life. Unless you think enjoying the finer things in life is sex trafficking people under coercive conditions. Okay? Is that what you mean when you say enjoying the finer things in life? I don't understand. I just found out an old friend who's a burnout is a Tate stand and he's fucking 28 years old. Well, I mean, you already called it. You said he's a burnout. And Dungeons of despair. Thank you for the five. Because he's been a hardworking male. And I don't like young men hearing these extremist ideas. And they're only going to hear these extremist ideas if they watch the BBC, which is an extremist organization. And they're only going to watch the BBC if I talk to the BBC. So I feel like now that these people have proved themselves to be extremist and very damaging to the minds of young men, I have an obligation to not interact with them very much because I don't want them spreading their extremist propaganda. We have a men's mental health crisis. Young men are disenfranchised. The suicide rate amongst men is much higher than women. And everybody pretends to care. But when I come along and say... Yeah, bro. I wonder how many people Andrew Tate actually uh, led to inevitably committing suicide when they realized that they were dumping a fuckload of money into his bullshit schemes and uh, channeling his rhetoric while not being like a professional kickboxer with a fucking Bugatti who was able to sex traffic women to like make some level of uh, finances work uh, caused them to literally move away from their friends and family slowly but surely until that isolation fucking uh, sinked in and they realize that they are not only a fucking loser uh, and, and desperately alone, but they're also completely toxic to women. Nobody wants to be with them. And now they're broke losers on top of that too because they used all of the remaining money that they had on some dumbass Andrew Tate multi-level marketing scheme, okay? Now, it's probably not like a huge amount, but I'm sure there's some people out there. I am a man. I've been a man. I know how it feels to be a sad man and a happy man. And I found happiness through masculine achievement and strength, through working hard in the gym, through dedicating myself, through building a life worth living, through taking care of the people who I love, both male and female, through becoming financially successful, through sticking up for myself, through having opinions, through being a man of honor and courage. When I do these things, I'm ostracized and they're attempting to destroy my life. This goes beyond a few media interviews. They are attempting to put me in jail and destroy my life because I am helping young men. They don't care about men's mental health. They have no interest at all. Yeah, Andrew Tate cares about men's mental health. <laughs> That's funny. I mean, his extent of like caring about men's mental health is basically saying 
Uh, depression isn't real. <laughs> You're a fucking pussy if you kill yourself. <laughs> fact, the ideas they purport, like I've just explained, are genuine. This entire 13 minute video is him just basically crying. I'm not owned. I'm not owned. Please do not put it in the newspaper that I was owned. Don't do it. Don't say it. Don't say that I'm stupid for having an interview with the BBC because I realized that my relevancy is weaning because I've been banned from all platforms and I cannot leave my house. Please, please do not put it in the newspaper that I look like a fucking clown. Genuinely damaging to the mindset of young men. On top of this, they waste everybody's time because their aha moment never works. Nobody's interested in it. And I destroy them with ease. But my hourly rate is high. It's not very fun for me to do. I just do it. It has to be done. But I don't particularly enjoy it. I allowed you into my home. I'm, I'm doing you a favor, giving you the first interview I'm giving to the public. You don't come here with a position of authority. You're not the police. I don't respect the BBC. I don't know you. You do not come here with a position of authority over me. We are equals. We are people. This is such a funny line because, like, He's like losing his shit over here because he invited the BBC into his home and then thought that they were going to be like pleasant to him. First of all, if you thought that that was the case, why do you have your fucking lawyer present? Okay. Who intervened numerous times uh, because, you know, I guess Andrew Tate, despite being the macho alpha dog, still needs a, uh, you know, mommy to step in. Um, also the idea that like, when he says you're not the police, that's pretty funny too. Um, because you know, that's not great. That part is also not great. You know, the police are, he said that to me too. If you remember. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm not the Romanian police, nor no, I'm not the British police, nor the Romanian one. People were citizens of the world. And we sit here as equals. And I see you as my equal. And if you ask me questions, I can ask you questions back. For you to come here and sit down and pretend you're the Gestapo and that you don't have to answer my questions is, is disingenuous because I don't owe you anything. You're asking questions and you answer But I don't owe no, however you want. This is a conversation. And I don't owe you any degree of authority over me. So let's make that clear. And that doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman or from the BBC or the CNN. I'm here to you answer your said. questions and be honest with you and do you a favor. Correct. But And I'm doing you a favor. But you've come here with loaded questions. You're trying to paint a narrative of me, which is negative. I'm asking you about and that's things fine. you've said that people are concerned about. And that's fine. You but you're not going to sit here and say you don't answer my questions because you're not above me. So. Like, Andrew Tate misunderstands how interviews work and gets unreasonably mad. Like a woman. Like a female. Hysterical. It's like, bro, she asks you questions as a part of the interview with the BBC. And you got so mad that you went on a fucking tangent about like how you're actually doing them a favor. In the interest of spreading good and positivity in the world, which is my number one objective, I, have make, I am making this clear to all legacy media outlets. I will no longer interact with you for free. Nobody cares that you lie about me and nobody cares what you say. You have destroyed all of your credibility in the last four years of constantly lying about everything. And continuing to lie about me will only destroy your credibility further. I have an organization called Tape Pledge, which you can see. Go to CobraTape.com and click at Tape Pledge, and you will see that I dedicate $25 million a year to feeding children, both male and female, in war-torn countries. <laughs> I would like to think that even the legacy media can agree that feeding children in Sudan or Turkish children after an earthquake, or Syrian children in refugee camps, is a pretty positive thing to do for the world. I'm pretty sure they could probably track down uh, the actual amount of money he's donated. It'd be pretty funny if someone did that. I'm not going to fucking do it. Uh, good on him if it's $25 million. Uh, I doubt it, but who knows? Uh, also, famously, bad people never donate a lot of money uh, to charitable causes in an effort to whitewash their, uh, you know, their, their overall image. You know, like, for example, let's see. Uh, 
<clears throat> Harvard University said Friday that convinced sex offender Jeffrey Epstein donated more than $9 million to the university over the course of a decade. Roughly $16.6 million. Hold on, hold on. 18 years of financial statements show that just under $20 million flowed into the foundation since it was founded in 2000. Roughly $16.6 million was spent on donations and grants. Most of the rest paid to unspecified, uh, unspecified general administrative expenses. Like, you can do this for every millionaire and billionaire, by the way. Okay? You can do this for every single one. You could do this for Bill Gates if you don't like Bill Gates because you think he's, like, making you uh, take the homosexual vaccine. Okay? Um, you can do this to uh, the Sacklers if you think that that's, like, really fucked up, that they killed hundreds of thousands of Americans with opiates. Um, you know, it's just, it doesn't really mean anything. It, it's, it's bullshit. So... Why would you compare a sex trafficking pedo to an outstanding citizen like Epstein? Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, they were in the same business. <coughs> the only difference is, um, you know, he was doing it at a much, much smaller level and couldn't do it in the global stage. So he was doing it in fucking Romania. In my last BBC interview, she tried to spin it and say that what I'm doing is somehow negative because I'm only doing it for myself. But this is. Are you defending Gates? No, I am not defending Bill Gates. But I'm also saying that, like, there are plenty of people who uh, also hate Gates for, like, unreasonable reasons. Especially people in his audience would probably be, like, anti-vaxxer, anti-Bill Gates people. You know what I mean? So I'm channeling that towards them. I don't like Bill Gates for good reasons. Do you understand? This is the level of delusion these people operate under. Because some people would look at that and say, okay, so before you got money from attracting people to your website by making controversial comments, but that might have got you into trouble. And so now you're looking for a new market. You're looking for a new market of followers who are attracted by a different sort of persona. I've always done the charity work, so that is obviously incorrect. And I have proof that I've always done the charity work, so you're wrong. Tate Pledge is funded 100% by me. This is my personal money. But I believe if the legacy media is intent on spreading hate, intent on spreading extremist ideologies, which it seems they are, not only the extremist ideology that men shouldn't work hard, but also a bunch of other ones, which I don't need to mention because most thinking people understand what the legacy media is trying to purport on not only the population, but the young children of the world. And what they are trying to push is far more damaging than me saying you should go to the gym. Therefore, I no longer have any interest with interacting with the legacy media for free because I don't want their extremist views. Oh, no, dude. Yeah, their legacy media is devastated by this, dude. Legacy media is devastated by this. Here, if you want to know the power of legacy media, I got to show you this one more time, okay? So, remember, we thought Andrew Tate's uh, massive, explosive popularity was, was I, and I thought this until recently, was due to simply TikTok, right? And it is true. He did blow up due to TikTok. And at his peak, uh, at his early peak, as you can see here, August 21st to uh, 27th, back then... He was blowing up because of TikTok, and he was, like, more, more Googled than fucking, uh, you know, uh, more Googled than, than Joe Biden, all this shit. But his real peak came when he got fucking arrested. Do you want to know why he, is, he peaked up here? Because that's when Legacy Media actually covered him. Not like the random podcast, not like the fucking TikToks, but that's when he made international news. Okay? That's the difference. But, like, who Googles the BBC rather than just going to the website? I mean, I think this logs it as, like, uh, going to the website as well. People use Google Chrome. Shown to young children without doing some good for the world. My fee from this point onwards is $50,000 and a box of chocolates. 
That is what it is going to cost you to speak to me. If you are from the Matrix, you will give me $50,000 in advance, which will be donated to Take Pledge, which will be used to feed children in war-torn countries. And you will also bring a box of chocolates to my gate, which I will ingest as I listen to your Matrix propaganda and destroy you. Because I deserve chocolates if I have to put up with you. I am an extremely successful man. And my time is valuable. And you're wasting... I think he's fucking falling apart. I think he's, he's not doing right. He's not doing good. That hair especially is just signaling to me that he's not doing well. Okay? Like, my man is... I mean, he, he just sounds like, a, like an unhinged psycho. Mine, yours, and everybody else's. So if you're going to come along with your extremist ideas, I would at least sleep better at night if you were feeding some poor, innocent children somewhere in the world. But you have no interest in doing any good for the earth. You're only interested in spreading hate, unlike me who wants to do good things. So, post my BBC interview, I've been contacted by the New York Times, CNN, the Clinton News Network, all of them. And they're all desperate to interview me because they understand the number of views it will get. Ah, I want to try now. I want to try now. And they all want to try a different version of the same aha moment. Not understanding, because they're completely detached from reality, that it's not an aha moment and nobody cares. They're not interested. They're not smart enough to look at the board of the chessboard and say, this isn't going to work. Let's ask him questions people actually care about. They're not that smart. So if you want to waste your time and mine, that's what it's going to cost you. $50,000, I managed to procure meals at around eight. Dude, it's so, this is so awesome. Like. Even his lawyers, even his lawyers are like, yeah, we don't engage with this whole matrix thing. That's nonsense. Andrew Tate says he's setting up a hundred million dollar charity for his, in his will for his falsely accused men. Prosecutors argue they have to, uh, they have created, that they appear to have created an organized crime group in which for the purpose of recruiting, hiring, housing, exploiting women. Uh, regards to former kickboxers are making, uh, began making statements like this. The Matrix conspiracy according to Tate. <laughs> The Matrix conspiracy, according to Tate, is the systems which are being created by society that are deliberately designed to enslave. But even Tate's attorney, Eugen Vidniak, did not entertain the conspiracy theory in a January 18th interview Insider reported. I have serious profession, and I didn't ask my client about this metric story because I think it is about something on media platforms or internet platforms. Vidniak said. <laughs> Like, I don't know this bullshit metrics thing. I am just lawyer from Romania. 80 cents each. So we'll feed over 60,000 children for wasting an hour of my time. Plus a box of chocolates. That is my fee from this point forward. Bro, nobody, nobody's doing that, man. Like, I, I know you're trying to lick your wounds and tell your audience how fucking sick you are and how you own the BBC, even though, like, at best, even in the most charitable interpretation, your audience should probably go, dude, what the fuck were you thinking when you went to the BBC, dumbass? Like, of course they were going to be, you keep saying the fucking Matrix over and over again. And then you went and you literally gave an interview to them thinking that they were going to be positive to you because you're an idiot. I will still speak to non-Matrix media outlets who are interested in the truth, interested in asking interesting questions that people want to hear the answers to. I will still be available to do my own podcasts and tell the truth. But as long as legacy media retain their reputation as peddlers of extremist ideology... I no longer have any interest in promoting them and making them relevant. It's better we allow them to become irrelevant, which they are doing, through their own dishonest actions. I will no longer interact with any of you for free ever again. So, to the 64 journalists who have emailed me so far since the BBC interview, do you have $50,000 in a box of chocolate? 
Sounds like a loser with a manifesto. Who does this guy think he is? I, I don't know if he's, like, legitimately up his own ass so much or, like, solitary basically broke him. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. It could be either. It could be either that solitary confinement, like, broke his brain so much that he, like, legitimately believes his own bullshit now. Or he just, I don't know. He's just, like, memeing super hard in a way that we can't even fucking understand, I guess. I don't know. Because I'm not interested in speaking to you for any other reason. I actually think I'm being quite kind only charging 50 grand. I should charge. Just watch XQC's take and you'll see why there's so much copium. I mean, I don't think XQC fucking likes Andrew Tate that much either. I'm sure he basically had a fucking centrist take for the most part. He probably said Andrew Tate looked bad, but the interviewer could have done better. But a lot of people are motivated in everyone's audiences to basically fucking... Uh, rush to any kind of conclusion they can to defend Andrew Tate. You know what I mean? But I don't know. And I also don't care. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't care what you take. It's 200 grand, but I'm a nice man. And $50,000 will still feed a lot of children. I promise any legacy media outlet that pays me the fee can have an interview. And I also promise to provide full accounting and receipts to prove that that money goes directly to charity to feeding children in war-torn countries. But I will no longer allow the Matrix propaganda machine to infect the minds of innocent children by using my relevance to achieve interviews and get views they would never normally get to spread hateful propaganda. Okay, I I'm not going to show the trending tab one more time. But the notion that, like, Andrew Tate is more popular than the BBC is fucking ridiculous. If you can't afford me, you're going to have to go back to just lying about me without speaking to me. Because God knows the truth. I know the truth. Most of the world knows the truth. And I genuinely believe that Allah is the best of planners. And whatever happens to me, regardless Allah. of whether I am martyred, regardless of whether they put a bullet in my brain, I know what I have done is good for the world. And the things I will do will continue to be good for the world that's crazy man thank you Rot. get your checkbooks out okay he fucking asked about 50 grand so many times like is my man doing not all right financially is 